Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, welcome to our invited speaker talk, uh, Jane Hart. Some of you might have known her in a previous life as Jane Knight. Um, and it takes a brave woman to change a name mid-career, I think, really, because, you know, you built such a good reputation as your former self, and now we've all got to get used to you and your new guys. Um, I've known Jane for quite some time, and in fact, I've worked with Jane in the past. Um, I had the pleasure to um, have her as a project manager for a project I was doing with some, a company in Sheffield. And um, I don't know how many of you know her work, but certainly, if you go to her site, you will find a plethora of interesting and useful information and tools. And I think uh, Jane discovered quite early on that you, know, um, you don't have to sell everything you have in order to make a living. And uh, so a lot of the uh, materials and tools she's made available are freely there for anyone to take. And this goes back years, years and years before it became fashionable. So um, I have the great pleasure to hand over to Jane, and uh, I'm sure you're going to find her talk really very interesting. Jane. Hi, thanks very much, Maggie. Um, well, this is going to be slightly different from probably what you've had for the last few days, so I hope you enjoy it. But before I start, let me tell you a bit about myself. As Maggie says, I've been around for quite a while now. I started in education. I taught in college further education for about seven years, and then in the 80s I was teaching in a university in London when the web arrived, and I realized how important it was going to be for education and training. But in 97, I left education to start my own consultancy business, and since that time I've been providing consultancy services to both business and education. But alongside that, I've also felt that I'm an educator at heart and I've wanted to share all the things that I have found out over the years. And so I've set up a number of websites. The first one that Maggie was referring to was actually called the eLearning Center, which in fact I sold a couple of years ago. So this is my new website and I've called it another center, Center for Performance learning and performance technologies. And rather than just being uh, a general site about e-learning, learning and performance in general, I wanted to focus on tools and technologies and emerging tools and technologies. Now, I produce a number of resources at the center, and you can see them listed here if you go and visit them. But one of the things I wanted to do was to build a directory of tools. As I worked with people, they often asked me, what tool do you like for this? And what could I use for the other? So I thought rather than just keep telling people, I'd build a list of, of these tools. And so over the years, I've built up what I call the directory of learning tools. And it now contains nearly 2,500 tools categorized into different areas, both for managing your own personal learning as well as creating and delivering learning for others. And that's just the top half of the list. But the interesting thing to find to note about it is that two-thirds of the tools on that list are now free to use. And of course, for that reason, they've become extremely popular. But two and a half thousand tools is far too many for most people to be able to wade through on any daily basis. So I thought, well, I need to cut this down to some manageable amount. So it was suggested to me that I should say what I thought were my favorite tools. But then I thought it might be much more interesting to ask my colleagues in both education and in the training world, the corporate world, to tell me what they thought their top tools were. And up to now, I started it last year, and up to now I've had about 200 responses from learning professionals from around the world. And these are just some of them. You might recognize some pictures there. Uh, we've got up in the top, we've got George Siemens, who was an invited speaker, and there's Stephen Downs. Clive Shepard's up there, another invited speaker. And some of the members of ALT are here on the list as well. And this is an ongoing activity where I ask people to share their tools. And for everybody that shares it, I create a page with a list of their 10 favorite tools and why they 
like them, why they chose them. And it, it does make for interesting reading. And that, as I say, is an ongoing activity. So if you feel you'd like to share your favorites, please do come along and find out how to do it. And if you don't want your picture put all over the place, then you can do anonymous sharing. You just send me the list, and I'll put it on anonymously. So over 200, another top, top 10 tools. We ended up with quite a lot of tools, as you can imagine. So I then started to work out what were the top 100 tools. And again, I started this last uh, July, August, September. And uh, at the end of September, I created the top 100 tools for 2007. And I started the activity again six months later, because as you know, six months is a long time in the internet world. And uh, still building it now. And as new people add their tools in, I modify the list. And you, by just looking at those few clips I put up there, you can see that there's some interesting ones appearing at the top of the list. And then people said to me, well, how can you compare all these tools? They're all doing different jobs. Let's see some categorization. So from that, I then tried to categorize them into 25 different tool categories. Not an easy job, but I tried to do that. And I came up with 25 different categories. And for each of those different categories, I found and I listed the most popular tool, most popular free tool in each of those categories. And it usually was a free tool. And then the other free tools and then any commercial tools. And as you can see, quite a few, only a few commercial tools there. And so what I'm going to talk to you about today are those 25 most popular free tools. And so essentially, they're not my choice. They're the people's choice. They're the people what the, the learning professionals have chosen as their most popular tools. So let's get started then. And what I'd like to do is, as I go through, ask you if you use them yourself. Put your hands up and tell me what if you're using them, because that's going to be quite interesting. So remember, these 25 are not the top 25 tools, but the top tools in 25 different categories. So we start with the first one, which is the browser. And people say to me, well, how come that's on the list? That's not really a tool. But in fun funnily enough, last year, it was number one tool on the list. Everybody thought it was the most important tool that you needed to have in order to get started with learning. Um, not just any old web browser, they wanted Firefox. Firefox, uh, only a recent browser, came out, version 3 came out in July, and I think on the very the, the day it came out, the version 3 came out, 8 million people downloaded it. But it's not just about its browsing functionality that people like. What they really, really like is the thousands, I've got hundreds, but actually thousands of extensions that are, mean you can add in um, extra functionality to the browser. So it's almost becoming your main desktop tool. And uh, these, this functionality is extremely valuable to people. And in fact, the, probably the most popular extension, in fact, it reaches the top 